You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler. Today my guest is from Western Australia. John Bromberger is the CEO of Pelican Manufacturing. John, welcome to Health Professional Radio. Good morning to you. John, Pelican Manufacturing is not the kind of name that immediately brings to mind what it is you do. So would you like to spend a couple of minutes telling us about what it is that Pelican Manufacturing manufactures? Okay, we make a lot of items for hospitals and nursing homes, handicapped people, and they can vary from pressure care items, lifting slings, manual handling items. Nowadays we're doing more um, heat sealed products, wedges and things because of infection control. And the name Pelican uh, we started using because they're quite an elegant bird to look at, but not only that, that, there is a fable that the pelican is the caring bird. And we've got an explanation about that on our website, that apparently a lot of the primary schools have a pelican as part of their um, emblem, as it were, and a lot of the universities, the Oxford, Cambridge, and you know, the other old universities, also use a, a pelican because it's meant to be this caring bird, and that fits in with the type of products that we make. Oh, well, a little bit of history. John, the, the product range that you do make, do you design as well as manufacture? Yes, we do, yep, yep. But everything, there's something wrong with me, I think, because I don't like selling other people's products. <laughs> um, we just, you know, you, you, you've got to back them up. So we design everything, and, um, you know, if something goes wrong, right, we can fix it. We, you know, we might need to make a alteration to the design, and that can be done overnight, as it were. So um, we're responsible for the things that we make. John, do you sell only in Western Australia, or do you have a larger footprint than that? No, no, we sell all over Australia to every state and territory. We don't have any representatives in the other states. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a, a, an agent in New South Wales and one in Melbourne who are reasonably active, but the far majority of the sales come directly to us, um, to Western Australia. And, and also we sell overseas. All right. And, and do you supply only to institutions? I mean, if, if someone's looking after um, their mother at home or something and needs a hydraulic lift and a sling, is that something you can supply to an individual? Yes, we can. Yeah. We, we um, have the same price list, whether it's a hospital or a nursing home ordering a hundred or something, for, and it's the same price for somebody who comes in through the, the door. When they come in, they realize they're not coming into a shop, they're coming into a factory. Mm -hmm. um, and we can spend half an hour, three quarters of an hour with somebody who comes in for a sale worth $50 or $20. And, you know, it costs us a lot of money. But I haven't really got the heart to say, well, we're going to charge you more because you take up more of our time. Um, because those people, they only come to us because they're looking after a relative or a loved one who um, is in trouble. And I, I feel it's a bit mean to uh, sting them, <laughs> as it were, and make them pay a penalty, you know. So that's true. That down to experience. Yeah, yeah. Now, now John, about 95% of our audience are clinicians of one sort or another, doctors, nurses, allied health professionals, mainly in acute care mm -hmm. in hospitals, but some in aged care as well. What's the takeaway mm -hmm. message for them that you'd like them to get as a result of having this chat with us today? Uh, well, number one, <laughs> go to our website, please, and have a look there. There may be, uh, on the website, there are different categories of pressure care, physio items, manual handling items, hoist slings, evacuation equipment, and there's one called theatre and post-op. And uh, if they go to that section, it will open up a page with lots of photographs of different products and if they click on one of those products it will give them more information about it. Um, the other message is that we, we do more and more 
what I call specials, where people will say, look, we've got a problem, we want to hold their leg in a certain position, can you make a sling or a, a wedge um, that will do that job? And uh, even though the people might be in Sydney and we're in Perth, um, they do a little sketch and they email it to us and we do a better sketch and email it back to them. Um, and I like to call it a sketch and not a drawing because it, it doesn't have to be um, uh, an architect's drawing, as it were, just to give us an idea of what they're trying to achieve. And then um, by talking to them, we, we get the message and we can make uh, a, a breathable, waterproof, heat-sealed cover to go on it, which is more and more popular. Um, and, and from those specials, occasionally there may be a new product that comes yes, out. Yes, yes. And, um, and that helps us to progress. So that, that bespoke manufacturing just to order is something that I presume is quite difficult to buy. It's, it's, it's not something that's going to come out of a large Chinese factory. Oh, no, no. The, the, the Chinese wouldn't be interested in it, of course. Mm. And the, um, the other thing is that maybe they could go down to a local upholsterer and ask him to do it. But what we have is a lot of experience in pressure care. Um, a lot of our cushions or wedges, we might put channels in there so it's softer on the touch, mm -hmm. which allows the blood to the, the blood to keep flowing yes. through. You see, um, and and we're bearing in mind where seams are for pressure care, um, the heat sealing aspect of it. And generally, you know, when we look at a product, we, we have a little checklist that we go through. You know, does it meet, meet this criteria? You know, for cleaning, etc. Now, John, in every industry, there are misconceptions. What's the biggest misconception amongst your customers and clients that drives you nuts and keeps you awake at night? Uh, I would say it doesn't keep me awake at night. We make um, lifting slings for lifting people. Yes. And those lifting swings can be used on virtually any hoist, right? Uh, we do, we're not an engineering company. We're really a specialized sewing company. Mm -hmm. Now, the hoist manufacturers make their hoist, and they get a sewing company to make their slings. Then there's this misconception that you have to use the hoist manufacturer's sling on their hoist. Yes. Now, in reality, there's no TGA ruling that it must be the hoist manufacturer's sling. Um, there's no work safe ruling that you must use their sling. The, the only ruling is that the method of fixing must be compatible with that. And it's a bit like saying if you um, drove a Ford car, you must use Ford petrol in the engine. Yes. And you know, no matter what brand of car, you can fill up with any petrol. You can use anybody's tires on the car even. You don't have to have a Ford tires. And um, in, in reality, in a busy nursing home or a hospital, they may have three different manufacturers' um, hoists, but the slings for those hoists could be spread in different rooms and left behind. Yes. So the certain the nurses can't go searching to make sure they've got the right brand. It's just got to be compatible. And um, we, we get requests for specially designed slings for people. And we're not going to go on our hoist because we don't make yes. one. You know, so yes. they, you know, they do it well. And we sell an awful lot of slings anyway, where people are, are not um, under the illusion that they have to do it. And the, the big scare is, oh, what about insurance? Mm -hmm. You know, if I don't, if I use your sling, will I be covered under insurance? Well, you know, we have our own insurance. If something goes wrong with the sling, it's the sling fault. If something goes wrong with the hoist, it's the hoist manufacturer's fault. And just by putting um, four bits of webbing onto four hooks, it's not going to um, make the thing not work properly. A very interesting insight. I can understand how uh, how that's a misconception yes. that you'd want straightened out. And maybe today we've we've helped a few people to understand better. Yeah, yeah, and and the, 
the other thing, I, I, don't get me wrong, people do fall out of slings. Yes. Accidents do happen with slings. The unfortunate thing is that when it happens in a nursing home, for instance, uh, shh, shh, don't tell anyone. Yes. You know, keep it amongst ourselves. And um, I'm afraid I, I try to do as much investigation as I can whenever I hear about a sling accident. And this includes our own products. Mm -hmm. And we, we had one a couple of years ago where two nurses were moving someone in a sling. One was holding his knees, the other operating the hoist, and neither of them saw the patient fall. <laughs> and I put that accident down to inattention by the nurses, and I think they fitted the sling incorrectly. <sighs> now, at the coroner's court, there was some discussion about that, and a lot of, um, you know, we did it one way, no, we did it the other way, oh, no, we must have done it this way. Talk went on in the coroner's court, um, and if they had fitted it correctly, that person would not have fallen out mm. of the swing. And from a lot of the accidents, and there aren't that many, but compared to the number of people who are picked up yes. several times a day, um, a lot of the accidents, I think, are through inattention of the carers, not looking at the patients, and you know, not not fitting the sling properly. Um, excepting for a particular uh, type of sling which have clips and the clips can break and in that case the nurses don't get a chance to know that there's going to be a clip is about to break it just goes um, and w when we make those slings we put a safety strap on them so that if a clip does break um, they won't fall very far okay does that make sense? It does make sense indeed, uh, and it's good to know that patient safety is your first concern. John, oh, of course. if people want to get hold of you, I have your phone number here as uh, Australia, 08, that's Perth, 944-44577. Yes. Is there a website for them to contact you as well? Yeah, of course, the usual www.telecommanufacturing, manufacturing, which is all one word joined together, all lowercase. So pelicanmanufacturing.com.au So it's www.pelicanmanufacturing.com.au Or if you want a phone, it's Australia, uh, 08 944 I've been in conversation with John Bromberger from Pelican Manufacturing in Perth. John, thank you for your time today. It's a pleasure chatting to you. Your passion for your product is obvious. Thank you very much. And we're, we're talking about what markets. We do sell overseas as well. So I don't know if your you know, um, radio information goes to any overseas hospitals. Yes, Health Professional Radio is now broadcasting into 30 stations around the world, including right. Asia, the UK, US, Canada, New Zealand and Australia. So we'll put it on all our stations and with a bit of luck you'll, you'll uh, be known far and wide. Well, I, I, you know, it'll be our pleasure to help them. But thank you very much anyway. John, thank you for your time. This is Health Professional Radio. You've been listening to Wayne Buckler. A transcript of this interview is available on our website at www.hpr.fm. There's also an audio archive on SoundCloud and on YouTube.